mindsetters, welcome to today's Maths Literacy Show, proudly brought to you by Macmillan. Today we have a special revision lesson on finance. We have selected highlights from lessons shown early in the term to help you revise and prepare for your June exams. You can download the notes for today's show from learnextra.co.za forward slash live. Now it's time to get on with today's lesson. Please post your comments and questions on our Facebook page on facebook.com forward slash learn extra or on Twitter at learn extra so we can help you with your revision. Okay, I think the best thing to do now is to actually just jump into the questions. So we're looking at questions one, which comes from the solutions for all, that's lit, grade 11, we're dealing with topic four, page 114, question two. And you know, you can get these notes online, I'm sure Lenny will tell you all about this later, um, so you can follow that, that. Right, the table shows two of the tariff structures for electricity in Gauteng for units of electricity purchased. So our electricity is charged in kilowatt hours. We're looking at two different units here. We're looking at prepaid electricity and we're looking at domestic. Prepaid um, at one rate and your domestic, that means you've got a contract for this electricity. So with your energy charge, this is cents per kilowatt hour. They charge you in cents per kilowatt hour. If you are between zero and 500 kilowatt hours, you're being charged 70.52. Now, this is actually quite an interesting discussion I had with my, um, I think it was my grade 11 class the other day, is that we're charging 70.52 cents. Now, that seems like a bit of a bizarre amount because why would we be charging of a fraction of a cent? But this is one place where we work with four decimal places. So if I had to put that into rands, I would actually make that into 0, 0,7052 rands. And what happens is that we calculate with four decimal places and then round off at the very end where we only pay, because we do only have two cents, or two units, two cents. Mm. So this is only 100 cents. We don't have fractions of cents. But this way, the electricity departments don't lose the money, because it actually works out the rounding effect is quite a lot. They don't overcharge us either. So we've got different sliding scales. If you're using more than 3,000 kilowatt hours, then you're paying 100,33 cents. Now, your service charge, in this case we're looking at, um, this is rands per meter. You are paying a flat rate of 307 rand and 4 cents. That's for the joy of having electricity. So even before you've used one kilowatt, before you've switched on one light, you're paying 300 rand. And then your energy charges for 0 to 500 is 79.31. And over 3,000, you can look at the difference here of 84.99 compared to your 100 rand, 100 cents. So it actually is a little bit cheaper as you use more electricity. Now, the question says, show that on the prepaid option, the cost of 1,010 units is 836 rand 38. So let's do this. We first need to find it. We're looking at the prepaid. So let's, let me change my colors. We're looking at the prepaid. 1,010, I've got to find it in here. There's my 1,010. So I'm paying 96.75. So I take that unit, 96.75. And I'm timesing that by my number of units. Okay. And I'm now going to get my calculator out and say 96,75 times 1010. Get an answer of 9717. Okay, 96,75. Now I'm going back to check why this is not the same. Definitely was 96,75. Okay, so I've got 97. One seven. Nine seven seven. Come on, yeah. Nine seven seven. I'm struggling to get the numbers. Seven. So let's cross that out. Nine seven seven. One seven comma five. And that is cents. So now I need to convert it to rands. So I'm going to take it back to my calculator and divide that by 100. And this is the point where I'm going to round it off. And it's 977 rand 18. 
I'm not really sure why it's not the same. So uh, they wanted us to get 836, and I'm not really 100% sure why it is not the same. But when you get these kind of situations, just go with it and do your calculation. We know the calculation is correct, so we've probably had a typing mistake there, and that might be my fault. I think I mistyped it. Okay, let's move on to the next question, though. They want to show that the domestic option, the cost for 300 units, is 544.97. Now, I hope I didn't make a mistake with this one. So, first of all, 300 units is that rate. So, I'm taking my 300 units and I'm timesing it by 79 rand 31. And these are cents. So, I'm going to do that first. So 300 times 79.31, and I get 23793. 23793. Now remember that was cents. I need to work in rands, so I'm going to just move my decimal twice. I'll divide by 100. But with the domestic, we had a flat rate of 307 rand. So to that, I need to add. 307 rand and 4 cents. So to that I'm going to add, and on my calculator what I can do is I can divide that by 100, which will give me the amount in rands, and add my 307 rand and 4 cents, and I see that it's 544.97. At least there wasn't a mistake in this one. 544.97. In fact, in the last question, I was going to say it's really nice when they give you the answer because then you know when you got the answer that it's actually correct. So hopefully they've checked the typing mistakes. Okay, move on to the next question. Right, the Smith household uses the prepaid option. They use an average of 1,400 units of electricity every month. How much does it cost Mrs. Smith to buy 1,400 units of electricity? Show your calculations. So we're taking our 1,400 units, and she's buying it. We're assuming she's buying it all at once. So she's going to be paying this rate here of 96.75. So we're going to times that by 96.75, and then convert to cents. So let's do that in one step. So it's 1,400 times by 96.75 equals divide by 100. So she is paying. 1,354 rand 50. 1,354 50. 1,354 50. And don't forget two things now. When we're talking about money, we need to show two decimal places. So coming back to my question, even though it was comma 5 on my calculator, I need that zero, really, really important, and I need the unit. We're dealing with money. So you must give me the rand value, the rand sign. Okay, let's move to the next question and see the rural family household uses the domestic option. If they also use 1,400 units, how much do they pay? So for them, we've got 1,400 units, and we're timesing that by 81.99. But we need to add our 307 comma 04. And to this, we need to actually divide by 100. I'm going to do this all on the calculator. I'm sure you guys can follow this, and we've done one before. 1,400 times 81.99 equals, we're going to divide by 100, and we're going to add our 307, 04. And she's paying 145.490. So, what was that last amount? Was it bigger? The last amount was 1.3, so she's paying a little bit more. But you can see, it's going to get to a point where your actual domestic is cheaper. So it's important to be able to compare these things. Okay, guys, I hope you're enjoying this revision session. If you are struggling and need help, remember to post on the page or send an email to helpdesk at learnextra.co.za. Now it's time for a break, so don't go away. We'll be right back.
welcome back guys. I hope you are getting into the idea of revision. Please let us know how you are doing. I'd love to chat to you on the page or on Twitter. Enough of the chat, let's get back to revision now. So I'm going to go ahead to the metric question. Now for all of you that want to still do, there was another question on tariffs, they're in the notes that are posted online, so you can do those calculations. So this is question five, it's adapted from the NSC, the Western Cape paper of September 2008, paper two, and it's question five. So we got Mr. Van der Merwe is 35 years old and receives a monthly salary of 20,000 rand. Calculate his annual gross salary. Now what's important about a gross salary is that your total that you earn. From that they start taking off all deductions, you pay various amounts, and then you get a net salary. So we've got two things, gross and net, but gross is based on his salary. Take into account that he receives a 13th paycheck. So that's quite an easy sum, 20,000 rand per month and 13 months. So, because he earns a 13th check. And we get an answer of 260,000 rand. Now bear in mind, this is a paper two question, but there's nothing hard about this. So. Paper two is not always that hard. A lot of easy questions in it. Then we have the following deductions can be made on a taxpayer's gross salary before you calculate his income tax. We can take off medical expenses a maximum of 6,360 per year. Now, the maximum means that you can't take off more than 6,360, but you can also only take off the maximum that you pay. So if this person who we're dealing with, if Mr. Van der Merwe only pays 5,000 rand in medical aid in the year, then he can only deduct 5,000. But if he pays more than 6,300, so say he pays 10,000 rand for the year, he can still only deduct 6,360. A pension fund is a maximum of 7.5% of his annual gross salary. So a maximum, again, you can pay more but you can only deduct a maximum of seven and a half percent. Mr. Van der Merwe has a medical expenses of 4,500 rand per year and a pension fund payment of 11,400 per year. Calculate his total deductible expenses for the year. So first of all we're going to do them in two steps. So the medical aid, the maximum he can deduct was that he is paying 4,500 per year, so he can't deduct more than 4,500. So the medical aid is 4,500 rand. That is deductible. For his pension, okay, let's now write the pension in. We can multi a maximum of 7.5% of his salary. So we need to take his salary, which was at 260,000 rand, and work out what 7.5% of that is. First, so we've already got that number up, his annual salary, and times that by 7.5%. And we see that that's 19,500. So that total is 19,500. That's the maximum that he can deduct. But how much does he pay? He pays 11,400. So, in total, his total deductions are, so for his pension, his deduction, <coughs> deduction is 11,000, what was that number? 11,400. So total, we need to take that, let's do a different color maybe, we're going to add that and that we're going to add them here, so let's get our calculator out, and it's at 4,500 plus 11,400. We get an answer of 15,900. The total was 1,000, no, just can't remember what that was now, 15,900. 
That's the total deductions. Now, I've been doing so many calculations that I've forgotten exactly what the question asked. I'm going to go back and check. And this is something I do regularly, and I'm hoping that you do too, to check that you've actually answered what they're asking you. So it says calculate his total deductible expenses for a year. So we've got his pension, we've got his medical aid, and we have deduct his deductible pension for the year. Deductible expenses. So let's move on to the next question. Mr. Van, um, okay, calculate his annual salary after his deductions. So his annual salary was our 260,000 minus that 15,900. So on our calculator, we take our 260,000 minus our answer, we have 244,100. So his total salary is 244,100. Was that what the number said? 244,100. So that is his taxable income. So tax is going to be calculated on that value. <coughs> right, now use the table below to calculate his annual income tax. Assume that his annual salary after deduction is 244,000. 244,100. That's the answer we received. And very often they're going to give you the answer so you can check it. But if they haven't, if you, if you made a mistake and you didn't get this number, please then use the number that they've given you. And if they give you a value, always use their value rather than one that you've calculated. So we're going to look at this table and we're going to first see <coughs> where does he fall into this table. So <coughs> I'm going to use the green and I need to find 244,100 and that is in this bracket here between 180,000 and 250. So he is paying this value there. So he's going to be paying, let's write this out, 37,125 plus 30% of the amount above 180. So he earns 244 and 244,100 minus 180. So that is 30% of that. So we are going to do that on the calculator. So I'm going to first do that 244,100 minus the 180. And that's 64,100. I'm going to rewrite that as 64,100. He's paying 30% of that plus this original amount, 37,125. So let's work out our 30% on that. So times that by 30%. And it's 19230. Oh. We're going to add that amount. It's 37,125. In total in tax, plus 37125, and he's paying 56,355. 56,355. So that's the amount of tax that he needs to pay. But then we've got a tax rebate. That's an amount deductible from the tax payable. So every person gets a rebate. That's kind of the government's way of saying, well, the first lot of money that you earn, you actually don't have to really pay tax. So he is under 65 because we heard earlier that he was 35. So he gets a rebate of 7,740. So from the tax that he pays, we now minus the rebate of the 7,740, 7,740. <coughs> so now we're going to minus 7740, and we see that he pays 48615. Go back to my question. 
to check that I've done the question correctly. And it says, use the table to calculate his annual income tax. That's his annual income tax. Assume that his annual salary after deductions was that. So we have calculated his annual income tax at 48,615 rand. So we've done the question. We've answered what they want. Don't forget like, things like your units and always check that. All right, let's see what the next part of the question is. So he is calculate his net income after tax has been deducted. So now we're going to take his salary, which was the 244 rand 100, and we're going to minus the tax, which I've got on my calculator. So let's get the calculator, 48615. And on the calculator, we can actually put this 244100 minus the answer. So his net salary is 195,485. 195,485. That looks like a strange rand. Let's just neaten that up. So 195 rand, that's his net salary. That's what he takes home salary. How do you think we're doing for time? We're still good. Still good. Still good. Okay, I hope we're still good. <laughs> so let's see what the next part of the question is. So, um, right. Mr. Van der Merwe, back to our 35 year olds. Right. Employers are obliged to deduct PAYE. So PAYE is pay as you earn. If the government had to leave it to all of us to say, well, okay, you're going to at the end of the year owe us, well, in our case, we had like 48,000 rand, and you can pay us at the end of the year, that's fine. We're never going to have that money. So what the government says is that, no, on a regular basis, you have to pay us. And the way this is done is off your salary, they take PAYE, so pay as you earn from their salaries and pay it over to SARS. That's the South African Revenue Service. You get your PAYE when you calculate your monthly income tax. Now, however, since your employer will not know how much money to deduct for your medical expenses and pension fund, your PAYE might be slightly larger than the answer you get from your calculations. So you can claim this difference from SARS and they pay it back to you. So basically, your company is taking off your tax every month, they've worked out a monthly amount. At the end of the day, you fill in a tax return. And that tax return, you then tell the government how much you've actually paid them, how much you actually learn, what all your deductions are. And there are times that hopefully, if everything works well, the receiver then has to pay you the difference. Okay, And you're hoping that you're not in a position where you have to pay the receiver money. So it's always nice when they owe you money. But that's what you get taken off every month. So let's check Mr. Van der Merwe's pay slip. So look at Mr. Van der Merwe's pay slip, how much PAYE is subtracted every month. So we look at his pay slip, we've got his name, we've got the date, so okay, that was for December, ID number, his tax reference number is important. There you see his salary. This is December, so he was getting his 13th check, so he earned a total of 4,000. Um, there was medical aid being deducted from his and the pension fund, but in December, he, the PAYE was 4145. So the thing is, it said how much every month. So it was 4145. That's the amount that was deducted. Remember then, in this case, we had 13 months. We were dealing with a double check, and in actual fact, you'll see here that this was deducted twice. So that shows you that it was for both amounts. So total that was deducted was 4145. Next part of the question is how much PAYE will be subtracted in total during 2007 if he received 13 salary checks? Well, we're going to take that 4145 and times it by 13. Now get our calculator out. 4145 times by 13 and we get 53885. So in total, he is paying 53,000. Now I can't remember the number again, 885. 
That is what he's paying every month to the receiver over the year. Next part of our question says, what is the difference between the PAYE and the total annual income tax that you calculated in the questions above? So the PAYE was what we've just calculated. That was the 53885. And forget your units. Okay. The income tax that we had calculated earlier was 48 something. We need to go back to that. There's the question before this. Was 48615. Move forward now. It's 48615. So that was the tax that we calculated. And I want to know the difference between the two. So I've got that number. Let's minus my original that I calculated. And I get 5270. So the difference here was 5,270 rand. So he has overpaid. And when he does his tax returns, he's going to be in great go spending. It would be nice to the receiver. I'd, I'd love it if the receiver owed <laughs> me money. <at> the <laughs> <bit>. <laughs> okay. Let's see what the next question is. Was sufficient PAYE tax deducted from Mr. Fundamover's salary during the year to cover his total tax expenses and motivate your answer? So in this case, we definitely say, well, yes, it was. And what's our motivation? Well, he had more. So he paid more he paid more PAYE. Well, that's definitely a very strange A. So I'll try that again. He paid more PAYE than he did then then tax. Then the income tax that we calculated. So in actual fact, he is going to need a refund. So we can actually include this that he's going to need a refund. Now it's time for a break, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back from the break. I know you can't wait for the term to end and the July holidays to start. And of course, that means winter school. This year, we will be bringing you special exam revision sessions from the 1st to the 5th of July from 9 a.m. in the morning till 7 p.m. at night. We'll also be repeating the programs from 9.30 p.m. every evening. So don't miss out. If you want to do exam revision with other learners and get help from expert tutors, you can register for our winter school classes at a PC training center near you. Just go to our website, www.learnextra.co.za forward slash classes to get all the details. But for now, let's get back to revision. Over to you. Next part of the question says she has a fixed cost of 375 Rand every month. Her other expenses are for the materials she uses to make her jewellery and the bearded traditional clothing. One month she decided to keep a record in the table form of all her expenses and sales of jewellery to see how her business was doing. So she kept a record. So this is the number of items sold and her expenses. So if she sold no items, of course she's still got her fixed expense. That 375 is your fixed cost. If she sold 10 items, well it goes up. You can see that. Her income, of course, goes up in a straight line. She's selling them. Well, we're going to come back to the question of how, she's, how much she's selling for. Use the data from the table to draw a line graph showing she wears expenses and graph showing her income on the same set of axes. So, we've got our axes set up in this case so it will be a little bit more accurate so let's see if we can put some values in so we need to go from zero to three thousand that is on my in my expenses here so i'm going to go that's going to make that zero and i need to go up to three thousand so let's make that uh, one two three no those are not not going very well where I want them on the line. Oops. Okay. <laughs> They're not working. Eh? 
Okay, so I'm going to make that 500, 1,000. Let's just do that. So that's going to be 1,000, 2,000, and 3,000. And it'll fit into our graph better. And we need to go up to 200 on the axis. So that's again 0 and 200. So let's make that uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Make that 50, 100, 150. I think that's right. 200. Does that look right? 200. Okay. And we should have now straight lines. Now, use values that they've been given to you, and three points are enough to plot this graph. So what is important is that when we do expenses, we start at 3,750. So we're going to get a color. Let's do yellow. 3,750. So there's my 500. 3,750 is about there. Eh? And then I get the next value I'm going to plot is, say, um, 100 at 875. So 100, why did I write it as 1,000? 100 at 875. So I found 875 is about there. And of course, then we're going to do 200, 1375. So 1375. I'm going to draw in the lines, the yellow line. Can I hope you can see the yellow now. And we're going to join these graphs. Okay, so of course my lines aren't totally accurate, but you're going to have you're going to have rulers, and you're going to do this all perfectly. My expenses, on the other hand, go straight up: 150 at 10, and it's got 1500 at 100. So let's do that. So 100 to 1500, which is about there. We started at zero, and 200 was 3000 up there and let's see if we can join this so then at the green line I hope you'll be able to see the green line gonna join those two three dots more or less and I'm gonna carry on the graph now don't forget to label your axes so let's label these this was our income and that was the expense as normally they actually give you a mark allocation for labeling this makes it easier to see right We've drawn our graph. Let's move on to the next part of the question. Using your graph, work out how much she must sell to break even. So how much must she sell to break even? So my graph is not the most accurate of graphs. It's a little bit smaller. I would have preferred a bigger graph. But where's our break even point? So I'm actually going to take my graph that I have here. Um, her break even point is this point over here. So what does she need to sell? She needs to sell, in fact, it is quite accurate. She needs to sell about 40 values, about 35, 40 units to break even. So the number of items that she needs is about, let me go with this graph, is 38. Whoops, where did we go here? So from the graph, and I want you to show on the graph. So from the graph, you're actually going to say, from graph, it's actually, it was about 40. So let's say about 40. Right, and then calculate how much profit she made this month if she told 200 items. Well, that was quite easy, because in actual fact, if we go back to our table, if she sold 200 units, we've got her expenses and we've got her income. So let's get our calculator out. We can rewrite it in a moment. Move my calculator over. Right. Her income was 3,000. Her expenses was 1,375. And check your calculator that you don't do something like I did and just enter extra numbers. And we see that it's 1,625. So if she sells 200, that's her profit. Let's go to the next page and write that. So her profit was her income, which was 3,000, minus her expense, and I can't remember what that was. It was 1,375. And her profit, and this you also could read off the graph. Her profit was 1,625.
how would we read this off the graph? Let's just go back to the graph for a second and see, well, okay, how would we read this off the graph? We would say 200. What is my value here? Let's try to see if I can do this in blue. My value here, that's my expense, my income, and my value here is my expense. It won't be quite as accurate as doing the calculations from the table, but perfectly capable of doing it from the graph. But just be careful, like if you've drawn the graph and they've given you the values in the table, rather use the table. But very often they ask you to draw the graph and then do calculations from the graph. Then you need to use the graph. So read the question carefully and see what are they actually asking. So let's go see what the next part of the question is. With the use of some of the graph, find out how many items she must sell to have an income of 1,800 Rand for the month. Now this tells you to do it from the graph. So go back to our graph. And we want 1,800. So I'm going to see if I can get a color. We'll use yellow. 1,800 is about there. And I draw a line across. It is my income that I want. How many must I sell? And there's the amount. So I'm going to read that value off there. So in this case, you can also check to see that you actually have the correct calculations. Now, what I want to do in order to check this is how much is she selling one item for? Because that hasn't come up yet. And the question is, well, number of units sold. Well, she sold 10 units at 150 was her income. So clearly, she is selling each item. So it's 150 for 10. We divide by 10. She's selling each one for 15 rand. That's what she's selling one item for. So now the question, going back to this question, let's see what our graph says. Our graph said about, I'm going to go with about one, six, uh, no, that, there's 150. So that's about 130 that she needs to sell. So let's get answer that question here. To make 1.8, graph to find out how much she must sell to have an income of 1.8. We said about, no, that's not brands. From the graph, we can see that it is about 130 units. And let's do our calculation. Now we've worked out it was 15 rand each. So if we take 1,800 divided by 15, we get 120. And you see how close we were? And my graph is totally un inaccurate. So this is a nice way to check that we're actually on the correct place. Now, We've got a difference of about 10 rand, or t uh, 10 units, sorry, 10 units. It's important for you to remember that when you're dealing with a graph, and it's your graph, okay, there is quite a bit of leeway that the examiners will give you on either side. So they kind of, I think in this case, would probably have said anything from about 110 to 130, and we would have been fine. And remember, my graph's not that accurate because it's really hard to get accurate on this board because I've got this calibration and things. Hey, let's see. Last question, I think. With the use of the graph, find out what Sifuya's total expenses will be if she makes 180 items. So with the use of the graph, if she makes 180 items. So let's go back to our graph. And 180 items. I'm going to try this in green. 180 items is about there draw up to the graph and across from the graph, okay, and we see that her expenses, we've actually gone to the wrong graph, let's undo that, so we want her expenses. So 180 up to the graph, expenses graph, and across from the expenses graph, and we see that it's about a 1,250, give or take a little bit. Okay. And again, we could go back and check, well, what happened, what were her expenses, for each additional one and try and work it out like that. And we know that it's somewhere between those two numbers. I think I'm going to leave this question here and I want to tell you guys a few things. Always, always, always read the question and reread the question. You know, that's important. And practice and especially practice using your calculator. Okay guys, I hope you're enjoying this revision session. If you are struggling and need help, 
remember to post on the page or send an email to helpdesk at learnextra.co.za. Now it's time for a break, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back, Mindsetters. Today we are doing revision. Even though we are selecting highlights from previous shows, you can still follow me on Twitter, at Learn Extra, or post or comment on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Learn Extra. Right now, let's do some more revision. Right, question two. Oh, I didn't tell you that last question also came out of the Macmillan textbook. It was the grade 11 textbook. But this one comes out of the textbook. Um, topic five, we've got page 136, question one. So, Mulalo wants to invest 5,000 Rand. He has two options. The bank offers. I love these names that they come <laughs> up with in questions. They're really wonderful. Okay, so you can open a super saver. What color is going to work on this? A super saver account today. Open a super saver account and earn 5% interest, 5% interest uh, per year on the balance in your account. So that's a nice account. Or you can have this, I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. <laughs> Makotla. Makotla, okay. <laughs> Stockwell offers, you earn interest on your interest. You get 6% simple interest per year on your investment. So does the DeBank super saver account of a simple or compound interest explain your answer so we read to you that again so you earn five percent interest per year on the balance in your account so is it simple or is it compound now because it's on the balance that includes everything that's in your account that's what you started with and the interest it means that you are paying compound so this is compound interest if Mulalo decides to invest with Makhotla, how is that mm -hmm. good? <laughs> Stockwell, for three years, how much interest will he have earned after three years? Show all your calculations. Now remember, grade 10s and 11s I need you just to do in like three steps. So we are taking, he is investing um, for three years. How much interest will he have earned? Does it tell us how much interest he started with? Oh, he had 5,000. So 5,000 rand. How important it is to actually read. 5,000 rand, and we are earning 6% simple interest per year. 6%, and we work that out. So 5,000 rand times 6%, and that is 300 rand. So every year, he is going to earn 300 rand. So. At the end of the first year, he's going to have 5,300. And I actually like to set this up as like year one, and then we go with what happens in year two. So now in year two, I've got 5,300, and this is simple interest. So it was 5,000 Rand, 5,300 now, but I only earn what I originally had, that 300 Rand, so it's going to be 5,600. And finally, year three, I've now got my 5,600, but I'm going to add another 300 rand and get my 5,900. So, matrix out there, you can use the formula. So that's perfect. How much would he have in his account in total after three years? Oh, how much interest will he have earned after three years? Now, the question, I didn't go back and check the question, which I always tell you guys to do. The interest that he had earned would basically just be these 300 rands. So my interest is actually just that amount. So it was your 300 times 3, or 900 rand. So go back and double check the question. How much will he have in his account at the total after three years? Well, in this case, we go back to the answer we had 5,900 rand. So now um, he decides to invest in the bank, show that with the other account, okay, um, show that he has 5,250 in his account after the first year. So in this case, we had our 5,000 that we started with, and he's only earning 5% interest. So, um, and in actual fact, remember guys that I used to take, I'm going to delete this, I often when I increase by percentage say, well, let's times by 105%. And do it in one step. 
Okay, so let me show you on the calculator. So we have 5,000 times by 105%, and we get our answer 5250. So that's our answer. Perfect. Then our second one says, uh, now show that it's 5512.15 as a count after the second year. So we're now going to take our answer. I've lost my pen. We're going to take our answer here of 5250 and again increase it by 5%. So we take that and we increase it by 5%. On my calculator, I've already got that number, so I can times by 105% and show you that I end up with 5512.50. And the same thing happens for the third year. Now we're looking for 578813. So we're taking that number and increasing it by 5%. And we see that it's 578813. Why 13? Because they round off for you. And they round up. So that became 13. Remember, we're dealing with money. So that's quite an easy calculation to do. And then which option is better investment and justify your answer? Well, quite clearly he had at the end of... The first, the three years, he had 5,900 with a first account. This account, he's got 5,788. So which one is better? Okay, so you answer that, you know, which is the higher amount because he's investing his money. But remember that with the second one, it's going to carry on increasing at quite a drastic rate. We've come to the end of today's show. Thanks to Macmillan for making the show possible and thank you for joining me and for participating in this revision session. Don't forget to include Learn Extra Winter School in your plans for July. Go to our website learnextra.co.za forward slash live to get all the details. Also remember that if you are stuck on any questions, you can get help by sending an email to helpdesk at learnextra.co.za. All the best for your exams.